This is Friday, March 11th, 2022 at 5.50 p.m. here in Seattle. And we're going to be trying to go on a bike lane. This is my first time trying to record with this method. Hopefully it works out fairly decently. This is near the Seattle Center, and right now I have a my DJI Pocket 2 attached to a chest mount. Look at that great view right there. <laughs> the fountain with the space needle. I don't know if the DJI is capturing it because I have it locked to a certain height. But let's see here. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, this this area so far looks really nice. We're supposed to be making a right turn up here to go to Harrison Street. It's about 50 degrees right now. And let's see if this is Harrison Street right here. If it is, we're going to make a left turn. I'm not sure if it's Harrison Street, but I think it is. So we'll go there anyway. Again, apologies if the video doesn't showcase something good. <laughs> We're literally right underneath the space needle here. Again, I don't know if the video is capturing that. So like I said, I paused briefly here to show, well actually I have the tilt lock on, let me turn that off. There's the space needle. I saw like the elevator shaft going all the way up to the top. Now let me resume the tilt lock for when I'm riding on the bike. Whoops. Trying to get to the right mode. Tilt locked, okay.
So my plan based on my light research on Google Maps is to find 6th Avenue and make a left over there. So we'll go halfway. Yes, there's a little bit of glass ahead of us, so I'll make sure I veer to the right. Looks like still got some nice daylight here for at least probably 10 to 15 minutes. I wonder if this whole area is called the Seattle Center, or unless it's just a parking garage for the Seattle Center. I really need to research a little bit more about the city. So far, all I've really gotten to do is look at potential bike trails on my our first evening here. But we wanted to take advantage of the bike riding because the rest of the days it potentially could be raining throughout the day. This is 6th Avenue. Looks like it intersects with the entryway to a highway. We are not going on the highway. I'm going to pause because I don't know how frequently cars turn here and I'll take a peek at Google Maps yeah so we're gonna go up ahead a little bit and then turn on to Mercer Street all the way until we get to Westlake Avenue so we've got the walk sign now uh, walk sign goes quickly Hoping I took the right street and wasn't supposed to go down. It's really hard to tell when you're in a new city. pause this for a second so instead of backtracking we surveyed our surroundings we can actually go this way and then curve back downward because this is Mercer Street on the left and it appears to have a dedicated bike lane on it so that's an extra bonus
Got some glass over here. So. Let's see how we're doing on the tilt lock. Are we still straight on the view? I think we are. Well, hopefully this is Mercer Street. I was looking at Google Maps and this looked like the way to go. It's actually better I came this way. I didn't realize they had this dedicated bike lane on this side. The only downside I see is some of these trees are sticking out, although I, I cleared that fine. Google Maps suggested two possibilities. One was to go down Dexter, but I prefer preferred the option of going down Westlake because Westlake has a dedicated bike lane, whereas Dexter kind of does in some spots, but we'll see when we get to Westlake. To me, it looked better, and it had a little bit of a water view. This one's a longer light, busy intersection. I'll kind of move my, see if I take my chest mount and physically rotate it to the right and left, I can sort of do my own pan direction. Here's our walk sign. This is 9th Avenue, so we still have a little bit further to go, I believe. Looks like the signal to cross is over here. That's unique, I usually don't see it positioned there. Yeah, I can see the following. The next intersection is Westlake, which is where I want to go. So far this area of downtown we've been riding is much, much different than the area that we took the train on. So I 100% see a big divide, so to speak, of where like the homeless are located versus maybe like the business district or college kids.
making a left turn here even though you don't see the bike trail yet it's still a smooth sidewalk and the bike trail starts I believe at the next block one since there's a decent amount of traffic here. Now it's 6.10 p.m. Pacific time. I think they said the sun was supposed to set at about 6.11 p.m. Here's another one of these rapid ride buses turning. Italian dining. That already sounds enticing. Looks like there's a big crowd out in front too. I'm just pausing here for a minute to uh, look at the nice little view there. I feel like this is supposed to be something here on the right. Let me look on Google Maps real quick what that was supposed to be. Lake Union Park over there on the right. So that's a little park there. Should we go? Let's check out the park real quick and then we'll go back on the trail. Turn my bike light off because there's no cars in this area. It's a very nice looking lake. We have the geese here as well. Museum of History and Industry, that's the building on the far right. I'm not sure if it can be seen on the DGI Pocket 2 or not. There's like a pond here too. <laughs> See, I gotta stop and take pictures too. I stood up off my bike and I'm walking now. Big giant clock there. Arthur Foss ship, another ship.
So we'll resume bicycling now. Just had to do that little deviation. The area looks beautiful. Probably can walk our bikes over this little bridge area here. So we'll carry on with the uh, bicycling again. Ah, here we go. So this is the area where they actually have the marked bicycle lane. I knew I had seen this somewhere on Google Maps. And it's nice too how it is a dedicated bicycle lane so the people who are walking can still walk on the right side here. And then they actually have a divider at this part in the middle, making it just more appealing and less likely you're gonna brush into a fellow bicycler coming the other direction. They do have these stop signs in case cars are coming. So you definitely still have to be looking both directions. You can't just blindly be racing.
there's a marina market on the right side here, a marina mart, excuse me. In the coming days, even though it's supposed to rain, hopefully you get to check out public pike market, more of the Space Needle, the sports stadiums, and other things. It'd be nice to visit a neighborhood too in the Seattle area, outside of downtown Seattle like Alki Park or Alki Beach. But with the rain situation, not sure if that'll be doable or not. I could be riding at a faster pace, but I enjoy taking my time in a new city, just soaking in some of the sights, looking around left and right. In the past, any time I've tried to film bicycle-related related videos, I've rather dangerously tried to ride with one hand on the left handlebar and hold my phone out with the right handlebar and it worked for some cases but there were other cases where hit a slight bump and you could just completely lose control of the bike can feel it starting to get a little chillier, so I'll probably have to throw on my gloves here in a little bit. sort of a blind corner here so you have to be cautious there there's also a blind spot if someone was walking from the right if it was even more dark like an hour from now when there's no light in the sky i feel like there's still enough street lamps on the left and business lights on the right that you would be able to ride this path reasonably well
that's an example of what I was referring to. Because when you look at a bike rider like that, first thing you could think is like, man, I must be going like super slow, which I am in the grand scheme of things, but just peacefully taking my time. If I was on a mission, like trying to go to work or trying to get home and something like that, I'd probably be going, maybe not quite as fast as that, but definitely would have a faster pace. Now I know cars pass over that big bridge, but I'm not sure what, where I'm supposed to go as a bike rider, so I might pull over in a second too to check that out. And it looks like, let me check here. I'm gonna pause this for a second and look at Google Maps. So I think the footage might be getting a little darker here when I'm peeking at it. So I'll have to judge whether I post this portion or not or just to end the clip. I'm not sure what that sh ship canal trail is, but I don't think that's what we're aiming for. turn over here. So 
So even though this bike lane is in the street, it does have these little, I guess you would call them bollards, acting as more of a visual barrier. So, you know, if a car came by, I'm sure it's not going to stop them too much. Right now we're trying to go to Gasworks Park, even though it might be a little dark. even have the, its own light for the bicycle. I've never seen that before. So now we've lost the bollards and it's just a street bike lane, although the traffic doesn't seem to be as crowded here. Gasworks. I'm going to have to pull over now and check. Alright, we made it to Gasworks Park. It was dark on the final part here, that's why I couldn't film it, otherwise it, nothing would have showed up, but hopefully you can still see a bit of downtown Seattle in the background. You zoomed in, you can see maybe that's the Space Needle. I mean, I know it is, but not sure if you'll be able to tell in the video. And then some more of the skyline and you've got elevation differences over there on the right whether or not it shows up it does look nice and if you enjoyed the bike ride heading up to here feel free to leave a like if you haven't already subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below telling us how the chest mount seemed to work out for the majority of that bike ride and we will see you next time. So at the Mediterranean Inn, one of the big reasons we booked this place is because they had complimentary bicycles. These are located on level P2 of the parking garage. So what they told us was at the check-in desk they said go downstairs and pick the two bikes that you want. So there's a wide selection of them. There's these gray ones and then these blue ones. We felt 
like all the tires on them. Not all of them were in like the best of shape. Like that one there was completely flat, so we knew not to pick that one. But eventually, when we tested all the bikes, the air was the firmest on number 12, which was this one here. You see they have numbers labeled on the very front of the bikes. But the tires felt good. Each bike comes with a nice bag, and we were able to use that to put our locks in while we were riding, because you can see on the front of the bike there's a lock. And when we checked them out at the desk, they gave us the keys. So number 12, that's the lock for number 12. And then number 16, that was the other one that we took, which was this bike. That's the one I rode, number 16. Same thing, there's a nice bag on it. These ones, in my opinion, seem like the newer bikes. But yeah, it was good ride. And then they also, in addition to that, when you check out the bikes, they give you complimentary helmets to wear. So these were the two helmets that we had. And then normally you would have to return these bikes by sunset, which would have been around 6, 10 p.m. But we uh, asked them ahead of time, like, hey, if we have our own bike lights and we attach them to the bike, are we allowed to have them uh, check the bikes out for a much longer time and they said yes that would be fine as long as you present the lights like show them to us to prove that you have them so we did that and we were out riding until about 10 45 p.m so very nice amenity at the mediterranean inn to have a these selection of bikes